Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today we are talking about some of my favorite animals in the world, ungulates. What's an ungulate, you might ask? Those are all of the incredible animals that have hooves. And that includes animals like giraffe and cows and bison and rhinos and horses and deer and all of those amazing species. They can be split up into two different groups based on their feet. We have a group that we call odd-toed ungulates or the perissodactyla, and that includes horses, rhinos, and a really cool animal called a tapir. The other group are called arteriodactyls, and they have even numbers of toes where they balance uh, their foot uh, with even numbers of weight on either side of their leg bones. Super cool. That includes everybody else like pigs and cattle and bison and deer and giraffes. All of these amazing animals. Today in particular, we're talking a little bit about two of my favorite Canadian iconic species, bighorn sheep and Rocky Mountain goats, both of which live here in Canadian wilds at the Calgary Zoo. They have some really cool features that I want to share with you, and I brought along some biofacts to help me do that. First off, let's talk a little bit about horns. Many of these animals have horns, and they belong to a family called the Bovidae, and that includes all of those sheep and goats and cattle as well as antelopes. Horns are really neat. Horns grow uh, out of on the skull. So this is a female bighorn sheep skull and they have something called a, ho a bony horn core which is part of the skull so you can see that part here. And then on top of that they have what's called a keratin sheath. Keratin is the same thing that your fingernails or your hair is made out of and this will continue to grow throughout the animal's entire life. It never falls off. It just gets a little bit bigger every year. This horn here is from a male bighorn sheep. A pair of these can weigh up to 30 pounds, which is amazing. Can you imagine if you had 30 pounds of weight on your head? That'd be walking around with three bags of potatoes on your head. Crazy. Now, a common myth is that a bighorn sheep will gain a section for every year and that you could count them like the rings on a tree. That's actually not true, but the bigger the horn, the older the animal, and that's important, remember that, we'll come back to that in a little bit. You can see inside here of this bighorn sheep that this keratin sheath is um, mostly hollow, so that bony horn core will go up uh, inside of that keratin sheath. Now bighorn sheep uses their horns for a few different things. First of all, ladies really like these big horns on the big males. And so if you're a male with bigger big horns, you're gonna have an easier time finding females to have babies with. They also help males compete with each other for access. Have you ever heard of a ram? That's the male name for a male bighorn sheep. And they're named because they will ram together, clash these big horns to assert their dominance. The other skull that I brought with me is a mountain goat. And you'll notice that the horns are a lot smaller. They don't use them for the same thing. They don't use their horns to clash, they're too small. Instead, they can actually use them a bit more like a spear, which is kind of crazy. That's a little bit different than what I have here in my hand. This is an antler. This is from a white-tailed deer. Antlers are different than horns in that they grow every year and they fall off. They come out of the skull from a little uh, piece of bone called a pedicle, and they grow new bone really, really quickly throughout the year. It's the fastest growing mammal bone tissue in the world. And they'll have their antlers for what's called the rut. That's when males are competing with each other for females. And then those heavy, heavy antlers, like on an elk or a moose, they don't want to carry those around all year. So they have a really cool cell called an osteoclast and it will destroy that pedicle and the antler falls off. So these hoofed animals have all kinds of really neat adaptations to be able to live and thrive in their environments. Now today for your daily at home activity, it's time to get active again, but you're gonna have to do a little bit of work first. On the attached PDF, you'll find some directions to make yourself an ungulate obstacle course full of balancing and jumping and prancing and behaviors to both move your body but also explore your home in a new way. 
Enjoy participating in that activity at home. And thank you so much for watching today's Daily Dose. And thank you for your support of the Calgary Zoo. All of our members and our visitors and supporters help us do all of the conservation work that we love. So we greatly appreciate everybody who's contributed to and supported our conservation charity while we've been closed. Thank you so much for supporting wildlife conservation and we'll catch you on the next Daily Dose at home.